God, that music's terrible. Holy crap. <laughs> I'll find something better soon, I swear. Hello, everybody. I am so sorry to my fruit flies and diet fruit flies. There was no pre-stream today. I did not have time to do one, and I'm trying to be done by 5.37 because I got something I got to do after 7 in the p.m. So it was either public stream or no streams at all. But on the next stream, I'll make sure we have a pre-member stream. And then this Saturday, I believe, I'm going to do the February... Um, member stream that I missed for the fruit flies and I'll do the March one the weekend after anyway hell I know I missed the original intro too but those bastards have decided to go back and revenue share all my videos I'm like enjoy your 10 cents assholes anyway if you want to become a fruit fly or a tired fruit fly go ahead and click on the link down below in the description it's a good time everybody gets custom emojis I need to do a new a new damn emoji I gotta work on one and they also get a uh, uh, pre members pre pre Live streams, members only live streams, uh, usually 99.9% .9 of the time you get a pre-members only live stream before a public stream and diet for, and the fruit flies get one stream a month. They're getting two in March because I missed February. Don't blame me. Blame the fact that someone decided February should only have 28 mother freaking days. So if you want to join, go ahead, consider joining. The link is down below. And if you want to give some memberships and piss some people off, feel free to do that too. And now on to the show. Holy shit, this scroll is slow. <laughs> hey, Jack girl. What's going on? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. Happy St. Joseph's Day to my Italian friends and viewers out there. Somebody get me a Zippola start stats. I need something delicious and cream filled. And what better day to have it than on St. Joseph's Day, March 19th. Hey, St. Joe, I didn't make that up, right? <laughs> Today's day, two, yeah, it's two days after St. Patty's Day, or is it two days before? No, it's two days after, it's March 19th, whatever, happy St. Joseph's Day. How's everyone doing today? I am super excited to revisit our girl Reese's Pieces, uh, the TikTok saga, parts 1 through 50, today we are doing parts 13 through 18. I'm going to try to do a recap of the last part, but I don't really remember because it's kind of, the last, I feel the last parts, um... 7 through 12 were kind of boring, but we're going to recap them really quick before we start. Uh, I am chipper. I'm feeling very chipper today, Linda Cinnamon. Very, very chipper in a great mood, so thank you for noticing. Yes, I know that music's terrible, everybody. I just, I'm just i working on it. I just haven't had time to find... I still don't even have an outro countdown music yet. I'm really working hard trying to figure out music, but I will make it work. Anyway, um, so yeah, so we're going to do this today. On Thursday, we're either going to do parts 19 through 24, or I might sprinkle in, um, or I might sprinkle in, whatchamacallit, a little girl world stuff, like a little, I heard just Breezen's lying again, and your mama caught her in some lie. My chicken with Amber and Foodie. So I don't know, th Thursday's either going to be girl worlds or uh, Reese's Pieces TikTok saga. We'll see how that goes. Texas One, give us an update on the case. There really isn't an update. Uh, there's a hearing date. It's May 23rd, 2024. And that's really all I want to say uh, until after that hearing. There's really nothing else to say at this point. Uh, the hearing's been set. All of my evidence has been submitted. And uh, yeah, I look forward to going to court and um, seeing all the evidence that people have been promising us for the last year and a half and never posting it. So I'm sure they were just saving it all for court. So uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. March, uh, May 20, May 27th. I don't really know what time. It says 8.30 Eastern, but I think it's um, I think that's just the beginning of the day. I'm sure there'll be a more, tail a more tailored time uh, once the docket gets created as we get closer. But we have two months uh, you're the surprise witness. So many people are have offered to be witnesses already if we go that far, so whatever. Um, so we have two months to go, and I don't really want to talk about it because there's not much else to say at this point. Uh, I've, all my I's are dotted, my T's are crossed, and I'm ready. So it is what it is. Thank you, Dirty Uncle Sal. I do want to get back to the Amber and Foodie stuff, and I'm working on it. It's just I'm so behind on everything, and I don't know. I heard Amber's something about Amber's doctor. Somebody might have lied, might not have lied. I saw Zachary Michael crying on Twitter again, as always, because somebody challenged him, so he had to run to Twitter and have a bitch fit the way he always does. So I don't really know what the hell's going on, and I haven't really looked, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so today we're going to do uh, uh, parts 13 through 18 of the Reese's Pieces, Who the Fuck Did I Marry, a Reese Tisa TikTok saga. So when we last left the Reese Tisas, I don't really remember much. Okay, tell me if I'm right. He wanted to buy a company car, a BMW, or he wanted to buy a company car. Maybe it wasn't a BMW. Whatever the hell he, he wanted to buy a company car. 
He told an attorney, he told the dealership that the company was, the Arena Football League, maybe the Georgia Spice Company, I don't fucking remember who anymore, was going to pay for his car. No car was ever procured. Then he wanted to buy his pregnant lady friend a car, which was Reese's Pieces, the Reese's Pieces lady. She she never got the car. There's still no house. Um, there's still David the Mysterious, uh, there's still David the Mysterious ex- executive assistant. There's still siblings she hasn't met. There was something else that happened, too, that I wanted to bring up. The woman is ignoring so many red flags, and I think it's out of just, like, she was in her 40s, and she just wanted to be with somebody. But the problem I'm having with this series is that she's doing everything. Hey, Busy, Busy, I'm going to watch your video on on stream in the next couple days. I want to see what lies the Busy Little Bee has been caught in. I noticed your tweet just now before I went live. Um... She, I think she's just like was. I think she was in her forties, and I think she just wanted to be in love. She was, she was in love with the idea of being in love. I don't know. So this shit happens, and uh, she still has no car. She has no house. She has no real man. Uh, she is yeah, but hundred, hundred and ten percent agony. Uh, Belinda was right when she told me she was. Like, You're gonna see a lot of parallel parallels in this woman's story with Indiana's favorite lesbian couple. So. Whatever. Uh, I said, I meant to say Breezy, not Busy. I'm sorry, Busy. I meant to say Breezy was caught in some lies, and I haven't watched the video. But we'll probably do that on Thursday, and then go back to the Reese's Pieces on this weekend. We'll see. I don't know. Anyways. So, she has no car. She has no house. The story is out of order, because she tells us about her miscarriage, um, losing the, the baby. And then she goes back into telling stories about how she's pregnant. And I'm like, oh, did she get pregnant again? No. She just jumped into the future to tell us she lost the baby. And now she's going back in time to tell us everything that happened while she was pregnant it's very confusing to keep up with i don't know but at this point i'm here to figure out what happened so did i miss anything good i don't think so two cars tried to be procured nothing there's still no house right there's still no house um her auntie and her her mom hate him because he told them both to not contact her for a week or two and she's like if you know anything about black families uh you don't you don't you don't do that you don't try to keep a mother and auntie from their their uh, daughter and niece um he's very shady he's got a new real estate agent she swears she's seeing him sign all these paperworks uh he he went from needing a loan to buy a four hundred thousand dollar house then he decided he could buy a million dollar house in cash and none of this shit is sitting uh, all of this shit is sitting right with this woman for some reason. I don't understand any of it, but whatever. So we're going to start with part 13. I can't even tell you where we left off with part 12. Other than she's got no house, no cars. Um, her aunt and mom hate him. He wears casual clothing to work. He's got an executive assistant named David. He's She's met a few siblings. Most of the siblings she talks to on the phone. And I think that's it, right? I think we're good to go. We're good. We're good. We're going. Let's do it. I bring you part 13 of the How Many Red Flags Did You Need Woman saga. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can hear. Okay. Part 13. Um, I'll make sure that uh, my audio is all the way up. Hold on. All right, it is. Oop. Of who the fuck did I marry? Okay. Um, so I've kind of given you guys all the backstory. Let's just kind of recap real quick. And she's had more outfit changes than a presenter at the Oscars, the Academy Awards. So I told you how we met. Yeah. Met in March of 2020. Yes. Um, basically, Georgia got shut down. I keep yep. saying shut down. Got locked down. We locked decided down. to quarantine together. She has kind of shut down, I too. know it was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. I can't, I can't believe that someone met a man on the hinge, and then all of a sudden it's like, it's locked down. My house or yours. No. Um, I really liked him. <laughs> Thought he liked I feel bad for her. Like, I know people are making fun of her, like, how the red flag, but, you know, she clearly was just, she wanted to be in a relationship so bad. And then she meets this man before pandemic, and you know what? What was usual? What was going to be a lonely time for a lot of people in her mind was going to be an exciting time for her. So, like, I get it. I get it. I still feel. I feel bad for her, but at the same time, like, hello. But how many like red flags like do you have to see before you finally realize you're being taken for a ride? Me. So, um, that's red flag is stand exactly. That's how we met. Um, hey, Dora. Things moved at a rapid, rapid pace. Yeah, she was pregnant by the third month, I think, right? They were talking about buying a house by, by April or May. It was too much. The first date, they talked about marriage and kids, or at least he did, which... That should have been the first red flag. Met in March. Moved in together pretty much beginning of... End of March, beginning of April. Yeah. Found out I was pregnant in May. Lost the baby in June. Had to have surgery. Can I just say that I'm really appreciative of her giving us a... a it's almost like she knew... That I wasn't fully paying attention. And I was paying attention, but it was all just like parts eight through uh, 
7 through 12 were so kind of boring and repetitive about the car, 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 car. So I'm giving her a big win for this because like she knew I was going to come here unprepared with a bad memory. And she's giving us like a nice little recap. So I'm giving Risa Tisis a win for this one. In July, started looking for houses, yeah. um, started looking at cars. All yeah. this stuff happened literally yeah. between March and the end of, excuse me, and August is when I got my car. So um, got a car in August. He paid yeah. the down payment for that car. Um, Somebody paid the down payment for that car. Which I was shocked by. And no, it was not a BMW or an Audi. It was a Nissan Altima. But I loved that car at the time. So he paid the down payment for that car. Told me he would help me with the car payment. The biggest mistake that I made, and I'll explain why I say this. The biggest mistake I made was that I signed myself up for a car, a car note, where I knew I needed his help to pay the car note. I oh my God. I didn't, so she... Oh, Dios mío. Okay, so he ended up getting her. I thought he wanted to get her like a nice, sturdy BMW. See what I mean? I feel like she's missing something. Did the Nissan Altima come up in parts 7 through 12? Because I feel like the last time we left her, she was still carless. Now, and then he was like, I want to get her a nice, uh, safe car for her and the baby. And I thought the safe car was going to be like an SUV hatchback. Hey, Lex, yes, like the stream. So now she's saying it was a Nissan. You see what I mean? I feel like she skips shit. And I feel like in five parts from now, she's going to come back and talk about how she got the Nissan Altima. And then I'm going to be mad about it. So I'm like, lady, you're out of order. Unless I fell asleep. And I could have fallen asleep during parts 7 through 12 and missed the whole Nissan Altima story. It's very possible it was a GG issue. I knew better. My mom has always taught me, do not ever put yourself in a position. Oh, my God. By the way, I have such crazy allergies. I have put the GG in allergies. Like, this spring is, like, for some reason worse than usual. Everything is covered in, like, piss yellow. You were financially dependent on a man. And all of that went out the window. And the reason why I say that was the biggest mistake is because when I pulled back the layers of this whole monstrosity of... She should... Let me tell you when you should have left. Risa Tisis, if you get a hold of this video by some... I mean, you, I mean... Let me tell you when you should have left. There were a lot of red flags before this point that I'm going to point out. But this should have been the biggest red flag for you. The moment you found out that this man lied to you about buying a house, then you found out it went to an elderly Caucasian couple instead, and then you went home and you confronted him, and he flat out told you a lie that you knew was a lie, and instead of confronting him, you let him go. That was the moment that you... That was the moment you should have been done, but... Oh, Juicy Water, thanks for being a member. Five months, pay attention, Clive. Listen, 7 through seven through 12 were kind of boring. It's, can we all agree? 7 through 12 were boring. Hey, Death. How you doing? Life that I lived for 2020 and 2021. It really does boil down to the fact that I truly ended up marrying him more out of fear than anything else. She, maybe a little desperation. That's not a dig on her. But I feel like at this point, when you're ignoring all these red flags, there's got to be a little bit of D. And I'm not talking about the good D. I'm talking about the desperation D. And I'll expound upon that later. But um, I got the car in August. And by this point, I was I was exhausted. But, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Wasn't this supposed to be a BMW that was supposed to be her safety car? Where did the Nissan Altima come from? Looking at cars. I was mad that I didn't get a BMW X5 dark blue with Cognac oh, interior. No. Okay. Um, and I was tired of looking at houses, getting my hopes up, looking at a house and picturing myself in the master bed. Oh boy, look who it is. It's that Belinda feller. Goddamn lying, inbred piece of shit. The kitchen, the island, you know, all that stuff. I'm a visual person and I was tired of giving my, getting my hopes up. Um, okay, it isn't Claire Milk. She's just bouncing around. She's too much over here looking like a, a damn uh, bottle of French's mustard. Um, so now we're gonna segue into okay. fall going into the holidays. Okay. Here's what happened. So I hope she explains. Has she had the miscarriage yet? In October, we looked at another house. Okay. This house was in Marietta. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, this woman was, has looked at so many houses, she could be a TLC show at this point. Not, what is it, HGTV? Who's the one that does all the house shows? HGTV? She could be an HGTV show at this point. How many houses now has this poor woman suffered through? And now this one, six bed, five bath. This lady just meets a man, gets pregnant with her first child. Spoiler alert, she loses the child. But she's over here looking at houses for seven beds, five bathrooms. This one's six beds, five beds. Bam, for who? <laughs> Why did you need a six bed, five bath? 6,805 square feet. That's ridiculous. The miscarriage was in June? That doesn't even make any sense then, Kala, because she was talking about looking for these cars and she said she got the Nissan in August. Oh, I can't. She, 
Rhesus Tesis, if you get this video, please, can you refilm this entire thing, but put it in a chronolo chronological order, like the, the Snyder Cut. Do like a little, do a little Risa Cut. Put everything in chronological order for people like me who need linear storylines. It's too much. Gorgeous. I want to say that the house was about $700,000. I really like the house. I can see. Seven nights, that's too see much. See myself living there. I can see myself cooking there. Yeah. Um, and so subsequently, my ex-husband put in an all-cash offer on that house. I watched him put an all-cash offer in on the house. No, you watched him sign something. Like, you didn't watch him put in shit. Our real estate agent, Scott, called us about 24 hours later. And he said, um, the sellers love your offer. Wait, did, did, did she react to this, Busy? Oh, that's hysterical. Did, Bre did Breezy react to this? Breezy of all people, bonus daughter Breezy? Did she react to this? The offer was an all cash, full asking price offer. Seven hundred thousand. Okay. okay. Let that sink in for a moment. Okay. He said the sellers love the offer. Oh, milk. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you're right. Asking that you do that you show proof of funds, so that they can accept the offer. My ex husband said, "I will show proof of funds when they accept the offer." The seller said, "Great, we'll accept the offer when you show proof of funds." So basically, we got into a stand a standoff. Um, and if you're a real estate agent or you work in real in um, real estate. I would love to know your thoughts on this. I, I I don't work in real estate, and I can tell you my thoughts on this. That's bullshit. If somebody came to me, if I wanted to sell my home, and somebody came to me with an all-cash offer, I want to see proof that you can afford it. Because the last thing I'm going to do is put my house under contract, lose showings, lose potential interest because of your broke ass. So, yes, I'm not a real estate agent, and I feel like... Any of you in this chat who are will agree with me, and those of you who are not will agree with me. Like, there are no thoughts needed. If you make an all-cash offer, the seller wants to know you're serious. The seller doesn't want to waste their time and, and, and lose out on a potential uh, potential buyer who actually wants to buy your house. Lady, the fuck? Reese's? I had asked people in my Thank you. life, like... Thank you. Bitch, show it. Show it. That's what I'd be saying. Uh, Gigi, there's an all-cash offer on your house. Bitch, show it. Show it. Well, uh, accept the offer and then I'll, I'll show you that I can afford it. No, no, no. Bitch, show it. Show it. And that's how it should be done. Those are my thoughts. Have you ever heard of this before? And I've had plenty of people who said I side with the ex-husband. I would not show my bank statements until they um, accepted the offer. And then I had other people who... No, you have... You know, you, you asked idiots. It has nothing to do with people's feelings. It has to do with wasting a seller's time. What's the big deal? What If you're serious about buying the house... Why would you need the offer accepted first? It doesn't make any sense. Like, if, if somebody says, oh, yeah, I like your cash offer, prove to me you can buy it. If you really want that house, you're just going to show it. Like, wh why would you want to hide your bank statements? It may, if you're, unless you're not serious and you're a scammer. We're like, I wouldn't accept an all-cash offer unless I verify that the person can pay. So I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Okay, so. Yeah, the majority of people are going to be with the latter uh, half uh, the people you asked in the former scenario, they're all buffoons. Our real estate agent called us and was like, guys, you know, the sellers are getting no, used No, somebody to called. <laughs> I'm convinced that none of these people are, are who they say she... None of these people are who she thinks they are. ...to show proof of funds. I had exactly, the letter Nicole. that he showed me from Chase. I sent that to much. Scott. But that was for a mortgage. The offer was for... It was cash. Fish. Correct. The Chase thing was a loan. How much are you pre-qualified for at Chase Bank? That why you would send that this woman? It's like she's old. I feel like she's old enough to know better. Like if, like if my baby, my man's, I'll say my baby daddy, <laughs> my man's was like, hey, Gigi, I want to put an all cash offer in this house. It was like I'm gonna send them my Chase pre approval to show them I could afford it. I'd look at them and say, that's not the same. But maybe this Reese's Thesis lady just doesn't have that life experience. I don't know. So he needed to show all that he needs to show proof mm -hmm. of funds that yeah. he had the cash to Correct. pay seven hundred thousand dollars. Correct. Common sense. <sighs> Correct. He didn't show it. He refused to budge on showing them um, proof of funds it's until a lot they accepted AV. the offer because he was lot. afraid that they were going to create a bidding war. So what ended up happening? That doesn't make any sense. He was Scott called us. Doesn't make any and sense. Said, you know, I apologize because I didn't do my due diligence as a realtor. Doesn't make any sense. He didn't want to show because he was afraid he was going to start a bid. It doesn't make any sense. He said, before I ever started showing you guys a house. A seller loves a cash offer. If somebody came in my ass with a cash offer asking for at least what I wanted for a house, done. There is nothing easier than a cash offer. You don't have to go through hoops and, and you don't have to jump through hoops, whatever. There's no red tape. It's just you can afford it. I see your bank account. 
we are contracted. It makes the whole process so much simpler. I know from experience. I should have um, collected your pre-approval letter and proof of funds. He said, so at this point, my broker has informed me that I cannot show you guys another house until you show at least us, meaning the um, real estate firm, until you show us proof of funds. And so I'm just like, oh, well, I'm telling my ex-husband, just show them the fucking proof of funds. Like, what's the problem? Um, and so it was a lot of, you know, I don't really, I find that this is really unprofessional because it's not our fault that you didn't do your job correctly. It, it got a little ugly and it got uncomfortable because I'm like, I don't understand why you don't show them proof of funds when you clearly just signed a document stating that you're putting an offer in at full asking price. This was the same thing that the realtor was saying. He was like, but you just signed an offer. Second, I'm listening. I just got to get a package. Offer. So what's the problem? Like you want them to accept the offer and then you'll show everyone the proof of funds. And my ex-husband without missing a beat said yes. So Scott did his best to work with the seller and say, look, accept the offer. He'll show you, he'll open the books. He'll show you the proof of funds. These sellers were like, no, that's not. And it wasn't so much the sellers. It was the seller's agent. Big respect to the seller's agent. Um, but the seller's agent was like, no, that's not how we're doing business. He needs to show those proof of funds before my, before I advise my clients to accept his offer, period. If he's not willing to do it, we'll go on to the next offer because they did have another offer on the table. For, um, it was less than asking price, but um, they were willing to accept that offer over the all cash offer because those people have basically shown proof. So subsequently, the house fell through. We passed the two-day deadline. They went with the other offer. Also at this point, our real estate agent, Scott, and I do not blame him for this, pretty much cut all ties. Because what he, I believe, felt like was, I don't know what's going on, but something's going on. And this is not how I do business. So until you guys are ready to show the proof of funds um, needed to buy a house, you need to get yourself another agent. Because we were already about 20 to 25 houses deep by this point. We had already put in two other offers. They fell through. And now here we are with this house. And once again, it fell through. Listening. I was listening. So the broker pretty much, uh, the real estate uh, firm, whoever the hell we're talking to, pretty much laid the law down, right? That pretty much said that uh, we're not going to help you anymore until you can show us some more shit. Did I get that correct? I had to sign for something. So, no, I had not court documents, a, a, a package, <laughs> nothing like that. I had to sign for a package. They couldn't leave it outside. Uh, is that, did I get it right? I was trying to listen and talk to the UPS guy at the same time, but I think I got it correctly. They pretty much, okay, I got it right. On to part 14. Okay. I'm over here like trying to, I'm like, yeah, all right. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Get my damn package. I'm like, I'm trying to listen to the Reese's Thesis lady. So, um, good news and bad news. Number one, this is part 14 of okay. who the fuck did I marry? Okay. Bad news. This is going to be the last post for the night. And the reason why, good news. Um, tomorrow's my birthday. So. Oh, happy birthday. I wonder when this was. I'm just going to make this video, post it, and then I will pick back up. I don't blame you, Belinda. Especially, yes, I don't blame you, Belinda, <laughs> at all. Belinda's always like, let me see your wick before I can send you this trailer. Um, and that's, I know what you're thinking. What do you mean trailers? Well, Belinda has two jobs. When she's not the manager of the electronics department at Walmart, she sells trailers in the middle of the night. Probably Friday, because honestly, I truly want um, to enjoy my birthday tomorrow. Exactly. I just, I just want to enjoy my birthday. Um, all right, so y'all don't be upset. <laughs> Just, if anything, watch parts one through. I just feel like this whole series could have been 45 minutes, but I digress. 14, then um, we'll be ready for part 15. Who's Josette? Is this her real name, Josette? Or is there a Josette in chat that's birthdays today? It says, happy birthday, Josette. Is that her name, Josette? It's not Risa? So, the house fell through in October 2020. And what I told him was, I said, I don't want to look at another house. I don't want to talk about cars. Okay. I want to get through the holidays. Um, because it was going to be a holiday season where I couldn't. Oh, happy, uh, where are you? Happy birthday. I can play you the birthday song. Hold on. Where is the, um, where's Josette's comments? Oh, she is. Hey, Josette. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I hope you have a wonderful day. Hope you have a wonderful day, Josette. Not celebrate my and Reese's Tises. family because of COVID. So I said, I just want to get through the holidays. I want to get through the end of the year. Um, That's a good plan. And we'll Reese. revisit stuff in January. I like that. Plan. I was very calm when I said it. Okay. No argument, nothing like that. Um, and he. And, and just a reminder this woman caught him in a lie months earlier about house number one. 
She's just living with this lie. <laughs> just holding it inside. Never it lets him lie to her face and she continues the relationship. And this is now like months and months and months later. And she's not even thinking about the fact that he made such a big lie. Remember he said they had the house, whatever. Next thing she knows, the house is in a contract. She calls it. It's it's an elderly Caucasian couple. And then she asked him and he came up with some bullshit excuse like... I don't even know how she's even operating at this point because that would have been the end for me if my mans lied about buying me a house. It would have been over. But then she's like, well, it was the pandemic. What was I supposed to do? Kick his ass out and send him back to his one-bedroom studio apartment. That's what you should have done. The fuck you mean was I supposed to do? This is stupid. He said he understood. I just... A lot of what fueled me staying in this situation really was the fact that, number one, I didn't want to be alone. Number two... I didn't want to look stupid um, by having the relationship end so quickly. See, she didn't want to be a Let's play that again. Did you hear that? Two, he understood. I just, a lot of what fueled me staying in this situation really was the fact that number one, I didn't want to be alone. Number two. That's it. There's only, that's it. Number one, you didn't want to be alone. You, you're lonely and I get it, whatever. You're lonely, you're sad, but it's like, ma'am. Like, sometimes it's better to be alone than to be with a guy who pretends to buy houses when really old white people are buying them instead. You know what I mean? Like, like I feel like it's better to be alone than to be bamboozled by imaginary Caucasian couples. Well, actually, I guess the couples weren't imaginary. By imaginary homes that are actually being bought by old Caucasian couples. I didn't want to look stupid. Just my opinion. Um, by having the relationship end so quickly for everyone to be like, we told you something was up. Um... So you, so you, <laughs> you didn't want to hear that I told you so, so you drag it on for, fi oh, this is too much. What is wrong with her? And number three, I was ready to get married. And that, what, ready to get married fueled a lot of stuff. Um, and again, I was still making my audio diaries. So listening back to it, I knew something was, was wrong. I admit that. I knew something was wrong. But what I thought it was, truthfully, was like, why does it seem like there's always something? Like, why can't we just go ahead and get the house? Um, why is it always something? Why can't I just get the BMW? Like, yes, yes. Keep going with that thought process. You should have had it the moment he lied to you about the house. But yes. It still didn't dawn on me how deep this something went. And for the people who keep asking, um, I'm going in order of events. So yes, there will be a video where I explain how everything came out and what came out. What was true, what was not true. It's coming. I'm just getting all of this out in order. So... No, that's the problem, Reese's Tesis. You're not getting it out in order. That is the problem here. Boots! I told him I didn't want to look at a house no more. Um, I didn't want to talk about houses. Do not mention the word Zillow. Do not mention the word the word uh, realtor. Nothing. Let me just get through the holidays. And for myself, the question was, what do you want to do? You want to stay with him? Or do you want to cut your losses? You should have cut your losses. And the part I mean, what would you really... But what was she losing, guys? What was she losing? You want to cut your losses. What do you mean cut my losses? They were, she hasn't gained anything. She never got the house. She never... Well, she didn't get the Nissan... All, I guess the Ultima payment... Ultima payment would have been the only loss she had. This is wild. The part that kept me constantly second-guessing myself was... What? what if he's not lying? What if he's not lying? There's no... Wait, the problem is, Reese's Thesis, you caught him in a lie. And what was it? May or June? I think it was early June. You caught him in that really, 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 really bad line when this house that you want is so bad, all of a sudden it shows up under contract. And you caught him in a lie. You went home and you asked him a question knowing the answer. And he lied to you. He gave you a lie as an answer and you were still okay with it, ma'am. Literally, the conversation I had with myself was there's no way he is lying. I can put my other headset in because Dex is looking his paw at me nuts. Lying about having money. You saw, you saw the no paper from Chase. No, little to no self-esteem, yeah. Anybody can get that paper from Chase. You can literally apply for a mortgage. You just put a bunch of bullshit in. Because I don't think, I think somebody confirmed in part one that we watched that they don't run a credit report when they do the, um, what they do, what you're qualified for. I think they just go by what you say is your salary. I think. I think. And they look at your bank account probably because it's usually, if that's the bank you bank with. But I don't think they run a full credit report on a, um, a pre-authorization, uh, uh, whatever the hell they call it. Whatever you qualify. Pre-qualification. They don't just approve $750,000 $750, for a mortgage for anybody. Um, you see, I've seen his checking account. No, you, you probably saw a printout of his checking account. You see how much money is in his available checking. Like, you... you 
I don't think he's lying. <laughs> I don't think he's lying about that. But what is it? Is it that he doesn't trust me? Like, I second guess myself so much. Is it that he doesn't trust me? Is it that maybe he doesn't really want to get married? Hey, Brandy. Like, what? Yeah, I mean, and that wasn't even a little lie, Brandy. He told her a big ass lie. Is it? Because I know what I saw. I know what I heard. No, I, no. You saw something and you heard something. I know that he's having conversations about. There was screenshots. I had to the be. money from this account to that account. Um, I know he's paying my car note. I could have a conversation right now with De hey, Dexter. Hey, Dexter, it's Gigi. Hold on. Ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring, ring. Hey, Dexter, it's me, Gigi. Could you move $1 million from my checkings to savings? I'm sorry, from savings to checkings. I'm trying to buy like 5,000 iPads. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks. Yeah, that doesn't mean shit. It's a lie. And all these bills, like clearly this man is making money. I know that I saw the the promotion, the letter from HR that states his new salary is 200 and something thousand. Uh -huh. Um. <sighs> And I remember thinking, like, God, what, like, what am I missing? I'm missing something. But what is it? Because I know what I've seen. I've never got my eyes are so itchy. I know what I have touched. I have physically touched these these papers. Like, I know how yeah. to read papers exactly. Ma'am, have you ever heard of Photoshop? So, what is it that I am missing? He's close to common sense. His family, he talks to them all the time. You know, he's just a regular guy that just likes to watch um, NFL football. He leaves me alone when I want to watch Georgia football. Um, you know, he's paying all, he's paying the bills, groceries. I haven't had to worry financially since I've met him. And as a woman who had lived on her own, paying her own bills, my God, that is the most intoxicating feeling when you meet a guy who just takes your stress and your worry away financially. I have a similar story about that. Not that I was being taken care of financially, but I had an ex <clears throat> who, whenever, when we first started dating, whenever we went out, we, whether it was us alone or all my friends were there, he always footed the bill. He always foot the bill. Footed? He always foot the bill. Always. And I used to be like, babe, like you don't have to pay for my friends. No, I can and I want to. And he made it sound like he had this amazing job. Um, and I knew what he worked for. I knew where he worked. And I was like, okay, it's possible to make that much money. But like, you know, he wasn't like paying my bills or anything. But he just, every time I pulled out my, my debit card, he was always, no, no, I got this. I got this. I got this. Come to find out <laughs> from his family member later on after we broke up. I, I, we, I was talking to his brother and I'm like, I don't understand like everything, everything this man said was a lie. So how did he have all this money? And he was like the man, and it turns out he was in so much credit card debt. He was just racking up credit card debt. Every time we went out, he was just throwing hundreds on top of his already existing thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of debt. But for some reason, he felt the need to impress me and try to impress all my friends. And I mean, listen, I got a lot of free food that summer, so I guess I shouldn't complain. But it's so stupid. Like, do people know how debt works? Actually, but the downside is he took away the stress and the worry financially away and instead brought a mental I did have my own legion, but I wasn't this stupid. I, I, I figured it out very quickly, and I was out very quickly. Fuck job I've never in my life had experienced, and I could not put my finger on it. I couldn't really talk to anybody about it because I'm a big believer in... Man told me he was going to, he was going to get his master's in business. And I was like, oh, good for you, babe. And then I found out later that he didn't even have his bachelor's degree. He dropped out of college. He lied to me about having a college degree. I mean, the man just lied about everything. He lied to me about having diabetes. We were at a, we were at a wedding... Uh, his he had a friend at the time who got married at their house or the, their barn or some shit I don't know and I'll never forget sitting in the kitchen after the reception and the and his uh, friend's new wife says um, you got to eat something because of your blood sugar and I said what's wrong with your blood sugar and then she goes did he tell you he's got the beatus I said who's got the beatus I said we've been sleeping together for two months and you have don't tell me one time you got the beatus the man lied about everything. What happens at home stays at home. So I didn't talk to my girlfriends about it. I didn't talk to my family about it. But I'm just, I, I just remember being like... Yes. Not to me. He lied to his friends. Because then I asked his brother later on. And he was like, there's no diabetes. He just likes it. He was, a, he was a pathological professional liar. And then the lie started unraveling. And then I called him out one day. And ooh. <laughs> fireworks. What am I missing? This is a long time ago. What am I missing? Um... So we did not talk about houses. We did not look at cars. Good for we did you, any Tommy. Of that for November, December. And he came to me like around Thanksgiving. And he. Oh, I love Thanksgiving. Give me some turkey stuffing. Yum. What I thought was a very open, loving conversation. And in that conversation, he was like, okay, I know I have fucked up. Mm -hmm. I know that things are not feeling too strong right now. He was like, I want us to get married. I want, I, I want a home. Um, I will show you whatever you need to see to put you at ease. Okay. 
Um, oh, not stovetop. How dare you? Have fun, busy. He was very, um, like, contrite. He was very just like, what What do... What do contrite? Mo- monotonous? Was he monotonous? I need to do to put your mind at ease uh, so that you know I'm in this. It's too much. And that I want this. And that I love you. And I want you to be my wife. Um, so I was like, show me your accounts. He showed me his checking. He showed me... He showed me one of his savings. He showed me a Chase savings. Um, he did not show me the offshore. No, he showed you a screenshot. And he did not show me the U.S. Bank. He showed you the the off the offshore alone. Because I watch enough television, at least I used to, maybe not as much as I used to now, but I've watched enough TV over my extended life period where the words offshore are a huge red flag. If my man said, yeah, I got all this money in an offshore account, I'd say, nope, I'm not about to be a Teresa Giudice from not Housewives of New Jersey. I'm not going to be implicated in some future mortgage mortgage fraud or whatever the fuck you're doing behind the scenes going on. No, 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 no. Offshore to me screams problem. Not to her. She hears offshore. She's like, okay, baby, I want to buy a house. <laughs> okay. So... You are not going to Joe Judice me, baby. Showed me those two accounts, checking and chase savings. So I knew that there was money. What I saw in those accounts, there was money. I told him, I was like, if we're going to buy a house, I want it to be through the mortgage on Chase. I don't want to deal with this proof of fun shit no more. I said, I do not want to look at another house until the beginning of the, next, of the new year. He said, 2021. Okay. That is when we then had a conversation. So I guess I lied because we are going to have a part uh, 15 or 16 tonight. Um, but... That is when we then had the discussion about marriage. And that is where religion came into play. Um. I'm confused. See, this is why she's getting on my nerves. This is why she's getting on my nerves. We heard the engagement ring story like seven parts ago. But now we're back to end of 2020. And this is when we start talking about marriage. So was she engaged at this point? Or did she totally jump ahead with the engagement ring story and how long was she pregnant before she miscarried this we need a timeline risa we need a redo we need a redo with notes whiteboards i could recommend you a whiteboard expert (laughs) yeah i'll give y'all the other part tonight stand okay let's go let's go i don't know jasmine she's all out of order and i can't handle it part 15 okay why does it sound so so different on this one around beginning of december we had a sound sounds different come to Jesus heart to heart conversation. Oh, love coming to Jesus. What's for dinner? And both of us have grown up in Not the whiteboard, we Danny. Un- <laughs> the fact that we were not married but living together. The fact that almost had a baby together. Um crazy. That's both crazy. Our families, my family and his family. Yeah. Um were very adamant like, okay, y'all y'all either need to get married or y'all need to separate. Um and so I'm walking around with a ring. So you need to get married or separate. So that's weird to me. Your family would rather have you raise a child alone if you're not going to be married. Like, what's wrong with raising... I mean, obviously, we know there was no child. She had an, she had a miscarriage, whatever. But, like, that's weird. You better get married or separate. Like, wouldn't it be better to... If you're not going to get married, to at least stay together if you're having a kid. That seems like a weird statement to me, but let's continue. She's very low. It's on her end. There's nothing I can do. It's terrible. Because I'm having a hard time, too, and I'm at full, uh, I'm at full volume. Hold on. Think, let me just double check. I'm at full volume. Sorry, hold on. Yeah, I'm at full. I'm at full volume. It's it's this part is just very low. Point, um, which I'll post a picture of the ring because God, there's so. Much. I'll slow this part down because it is super low, so it's probably going to be easier to hear if we're a little slower. Much to unpack, but anyway, walking around with the ring, and so he said to me, "Whatever I need to do to do my part to make this work, I'm willing to do." At the same time, it wasn't that... And you believed him. After all the failed houses, the failed cars, uh, him leaving you at a hospital for hours on end uh, while you had a DNC, um, you, you, none of that... Oh, Lord. I did not trust him as much as it was. I felt like I wasn't trusting myself. <sighs> because, again, like I said in the previous video, I know what I saw. I know what I read. I know what I've heard. You wanted to believe it. It's like when you watch those videos on YouTube of the older people who get catfished by younger lovers on the internet, they just want to believe it's real so bad. Um, But fuck, something was not sitting right with me. And every time I would question it in my head, the other side of me was like, okay, you know he ain't lying about the money because you saw it. 
So you know he ain't lying. Girl, are you that... Like, I remember saying to myself, are you that jaded that you don't even know what is... It like? never crossed your mind that possibly it was doctored. <laughs> now, one time, Miss Tisa... I'd like to have a decent I know. Man. I know, Claudia. I know. Yes, I really had the audacity to have that thought. So... We agreed at the beginning of December. Like, uh, Reese's. Reese's Tesis. I believe I loved him. I believe he loved me. No. No. So the decision... I believe you loved him. He did not love you. It was no. that we were going to get married. No. It's still COVID, so we had to follow a certain protocol. No. So we filed um, our marriage license in um, Fayette County, Georgia, because I, <laughs> you could not get an appointment in Clayton County to save your life. So we filed the marriage license in Fayette County. On our marriage license, it asked the number of um, previous marriages. He said one. I had zero. Okay. It asked for our... He probably had like 10 of them. ...security numbers. Oh. He put his social security number down. I put my social security number down. Okay. I mentally wrote down his social security number. And I did a background check. So that should have been the end of this saga. Spoiler alert. There's still five hours and eight minutes left. (laughs) I did a background check after I had filed a marriage license. Yes, I know, but I did. The background exactly check, death. I um, can't. Nothing came back. It was uh, it was it was like no results found. Um, I did a criminal background check. Nothing came back because it was a fake number. So I'm sure. I thought one of two things: either I wow. had the wrong social, meaning I wrote down the wrong social, or my paranoia was unfounded. There's nothing wrong with him. She always, it's always, she always makes excuses. She really just, poor woman, this poor woman, I hope she's got a, I hope we find out she's got a man now. This woman wants to be loved so bad. Because he has been always throughout the relationship. A I know, Danny, I know. About law enforcement, um, following the law, because his dad was a retired police officer. So, this Jack, is- that's what it was, Jack. She wanted, she just wants to be in a relationship. Like, so I feel bad for her in a way because she wanted this so bad. She's older woman, you know, like the late 30s, early 40s. She wants a baby. She wants a house. She wants a husband. Like, I feel bad for her. But, lady, like, all this time you wasted with him, you probably could have spent that time finding a man who actually wanted to be in a relationship with you who wasn't a complete fraud. Someone who has been, this is a guy who would check to make sure my tail lights were working, make sure my signals were working, okay. make sure my oil was good make sure i had enough gas in the car okay so when the criminal history came back with no results Uh i was like well of course there isn't because the man probably hasn't had so much as a speeding ticket so thought we uh filed the marriage license and then we made an appointment to get married and waiting wait was that her or me i skipped something and then we made an appointment to get married and waiting for the judge to come out of chambers okay so i don't know maybe the person who uploaded this does anybody know what she says there i think the person who uploaded this must have had a problem i don't know what that one it's, it's waiting fun. for the judge to come out of chambers okay so that she could marry us yeah and the reason why i'm pausing is because my god if i could go back and see that young woman sitting in that lobby yeah I know what? we can't go back in time. What is she talking about? <laughs> what I miss? Damn, if I could go back in time. She's talking about her? Immediately. I didn't tell anyone I was getting married because I was afraid oh. that. We had tried before in September and something came up. <laughs> so I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't want to get anyone's hopes up. I didn't want to get my hopes up. Um, I know that's bad, but again, I said I would be honest even if it's ugly. Um, I told my mom, my family, that we got married, told my friends. They could not believe it. Like they, My mother was um, relieved. But she had no idea about what was going on. My aunt was more like, really? You married him? My friend, the one who took me to the hospital for the miscarriage, was like, I wish you would have told me, like, you deserve to have people there take pictures and celebrate and all this other stuff. Um, and you would think she would have really, and I get it was COVID, but I guess she was in a rush, but you would have thought that she would have just wanted to wait for that because, like, She's obviously buys into the whole idea of romance and love and being in love. Like, you'd think she would have wanted, like, the wedding dress and the big day, but I guess she was just in a rush. I don't know. And she was like, you know, she's the type of friend, if you like it, I love it. You rock with him, I rock with him. The moment you don't, I don't either. So she was... No, I'm not that kind of friend. I I would be the one shaking her saying, are you 
Brain dead. <laughs> I would shake it like, are you stupid? What are you doing? But I also think that she probably wasn't telling her friends the whole story. Because if I had a friend who told me, oh yeah, he pretended we were buying a house and it, and two old people bought it and said, we would have a problem. I'd say either our friendship is ending or this relationship is ending. Pick one. Because I can't stand by and watch you be this stupid. I'm sorry. They were happy for me. They just, they just hated that I had to get married during COVID. Because um, they were like, oh, we would have loved to have, you know thrown you a bridal shower and oh that's cute see party. could have had a bachelor you could have went to the strip club uh being all of that it just sucks that you could have went and saw them naked men's experience that mm -hmm. so we got married on a tuesday um on the way home stopped and got some wings went home and i had to get ready to go to work the next day and like oh wings sound so good don't they <laughs> wings and a side salad yum i got married january 5th 2021? By January 31st. I knew I was in trouble. Oh, boy. 26 old days. Uh, did she miscarry it? She had to have by this point, right? I still didn't know how deep. But I knew I was in trouble. So, <laughs> to give you all a very, very, very candid idea. Got married January 5th. Yeah. The things that, the normal things that married newlyweds do. Yeah. Like sexy time? When we got married, completely stopped. And that was not by me. You always hear men talk about, man, now that we're married, she don't. Um, in my case, it was the exact opposite. Really? So I think what she's alluding to is that the sexy time stopped after marriage. <laughs> but he stopped it, which is very odd because you know us men's. <laughs> us men's. Uh, usually it's the other way around. So in this instance, they get married. He suddenly no longer wants to please her physically. Interesting. It was the exact opposite. So, why? I don't know. Anyway, because <laughs> this is not a, a forum to be all R rated or whatnot, but y'all get what I'm saying. Yeah, I so, do. Sexy type. Um, we got married January 5th. She yeah. yeah. And his name was David. <laughs> David, the executive assistant. That's my guess. January 6th, I went to work. It was <laughs> um, a lot of people congratulating me because it kind of word got out that I had gotten married January 7th. Um, Imagine knowing this woman in real life and living this experience with her, and like I would just be sitting here thinking, Reese's, the hell are you doing? I she had she had to have hidden a lot from people because if I had a friend who was going through this, it just I feel like I would be more vocal. The paperwork to change my last name. Just and me. If you were following me, you can go back like 15, 16 videos, and I talk about how I had to change my name back <laughs> to my maiden name. But I changed my name within about three days of getting married. <clears throat> my attitude was, this is the bed that I made. I'm going to do right by him. I'm going to do right by my marriage. No. Um, I took marriage seriously. And when I no. married, I absolutely married him thinking, I'm going to be with you for the next 40, 50 years. So mm -hmm. we're going to figure this shit out. That was my mindset. Mm -mm. I did not get married to turn around and be divorced in six months. But I got married January. This is only six months of marriage time, and we managed to get 50 parts out of this. January 5th, 2021. And by January 31st. You knew you were in trouble. I was in serious trouble. So, that is. I mean, you should have known that a long time ago. The next set of videos, the next set of all this will be um, me talking about how things went downhill before it crashed and i found everything out in the meantime tomorrow is my birthday happy birthday happy birthday to me all right so if the audio is good i'm gonna go back to 1.5 okay it's a lot louder now there was something wrong with that part so we gonna go back to 1.5 and let's see what happens this is part uh going to part 16 the fuck did i marry this all is right. the audio should be much better i think it was just a part 15 part i think it was a part 50 part. I think it was just part 50. The interlude, basically. Um, I'm not recapping on this video. I'm just kind of answering some stuff that has been written to me. Someone was like, why are you airing your business out on social media? It's a valid question. Um, for me personally, I feel like this was traumatic mm -hmm. to experience, to live through. Um, and I'm I'll, sure. And I'll expound on that on another video the aftermath of the toll that this took. Um, honestly, 
<laughs> and it, I know some people are going to be like that. You shut up, Texas one. She did not. Is there what's the name of the episode? I'll find that episode. Did she really get married? What was the what was the episode about? People get married on Donahue. I've been watching. <laughs> YouTube's been recommending me old Sally Jesse Raphael episodes. I don't know why. You know what I watched the other day? I was laying on the couch stoned, <laughs> and I watched. Um, I think it was a 1990 episode or 91 episode of um, Child Stars. Where are they now? And it was like all these child stars from like the Waltons and the Brady Bunch. I think the Brady Bunch. It was it was Cindy from the Brady Bunch, some guy from the Waltons, the guy from Family Affair. It was like all of these child actors who were now adults in the early 90s and how messed up their lives were. Cindy Brady's wasn't too bad, but this a couple of the other ones are really fucked up uh, lives from being famous on TV. Oh, the uh, Wally from the Beavers, the Cleavers. It was a good... And I'm sitting here thinking, why am I watching Sally Jesse Raphael? It sounds crazy. It is kind of... Cathar- oh, I saw a really good one that YouTube recommended to me the other day where it was a Deadbeat Fathers and um, this woman whose ex-husband wouldn't refuse to pay child support, she put an ad out in the paper for him, uh, letting everybody know he was a deadbeat. And uh, they brought her and him on the show. So they brought her, the kids, and they brought him and his new wife and his new kid on the show. And it was so incredibly fucked up to watch. If you get bored, <laughs> YouTube Sally Jesse Raphael deadbeat dad episode, I think is it'll come up that way. A fat, this guy was such a POS. And then I Googled him. He has since passed away. Arctic to get this out because i cannot tell yes you i wasn't a billboard no texas this one was a news article i think i think she took out an i think she took out a full page ad in a local newspaper and it went viral well viral at the time for early 90s late 80s but yeah how much of this has been internalized um since 2020 also i don't want to seem like a cautionary tale to other women or to men for that matter but to my sisters to my ladies white black hispanic asian doesn't matter if something does not sit right with you, investigate it. Um, I cannot stress that enough. Yes, yes, yes. You should have stressed this enough the first time he screwed you over and lied to you. If just one woman watches these videos and she's like, you know what? Something don't sit right with me. Let me look into this. Um, then it was worth it. Yes, it is a Lifetime movie. Yes, it is Netflix. Yes, it is crazy. Yes, it is hilarious also. Um, I don't find it funny. I find it sad. <laughs> I don't find anything about her life. I find it very sad. And I understand all of those reactions. As someone who lived it. I know I'm not crying for this woman. I'm crying for the pollen. Um, don't cry for me, Risa Tisa. It was traumatic. But. Oh, I feel bad for her. I mean, I get it. It's easy to make fun of her. Like, how could you ignore these red flags? But like I said, if you like take a step back and realize this poor woman just wanted love she wanted some good old-fashioned love she wanted a man she wanted a kid the white picket fence or any color picket fence the fence doesn't have to be racist uh and that's all she wanted so in that aspect i feel bad for her for that but i feel like <sighs> god it feels good to finally admit um what the fuck i went through and again by the time this is uh, uploaded mm-hmm. i'm only to january of 2021 right after getting married mm-hmm. so when i think back on it there's things that i'm very very grateful for um, there are things that I'm just like, why, why did you not pay attention? Why did you not question? That because you just wanted, listen, watch those old people on YouTube, the elderlies who get, um, oh, really? Oh, so she met it on, okay. I thought she was saying the deadbeats on billboards. So she saw a billboard of three men advertising for a wife and your sister answered and they went on Phil Donahue. Is that is that what you're trying to tell us, Texas? That's insane. Oh, and they got divorced. Oh, how sad. Your sister, is she still is she still with us? If she is, hopefully she is, should do a 50-part TikTok. Who the F did I marry on Phil Donahue? That'd be a great, great, great. Your sister would go viral. Um, and the sad part is... I can't even begin to tell you. I don't remember the woman I was before I met that man. I don't remember. Um, Because going through something like that, it changes you. And I've seen some women in the comments who were like, I was married to a habitual liar. I was married to a pathological liar. My baby daddy's a a pathological liar. And my heart goes out to them because until you have dealt with someone so depraved, you, you really don't quite know how bad it can get. Um, So I'm fully aware that this was a risk, putting this out on social media, telling my story, my truth. 
and really kind of being like, look, this is this is what I went through. I made dumb decisions. I overlooked things I should not have overlooked. You son of a bitch. Let's try that again. What I was saying was, I still, I know, I know, I'm on mute. What I was saying was, <laughs> hold on. Uh, what I was saying was, I still can't believe that she went to this man knowing he was lying and then caught him in a lie, which most people would use that as a reason to. <sighs> That would have been the reason to get out. Like, I'm going to catch you in this lie. You lie to me. We're done. Not Risa Tisa. She catches this man in a lie. And then she's like, what do you want to have for dinner? <laughs> what do you want? Like, I don't understand, like, why she didn't end it there. Like, why not end it there? And I know it's because sadness and loneliness and a touch of desperation. But how desperate are we to be lied to? Like, okay, everything else... You don't know the truth, and you know, I, I feel like he's telling me the truth, but maybe he's not. Maybe he is. Okay, that's fine. But you had this one instance where you caught him in a bold face, bald face or bold face? Bald face. Bald face. Whatever. You caught him in a big mother effing lie, and that was your out of this relationship, and instead you're like, whatever. I argued away things I should not have argued away. Um, I can pinpoint exactly the moment I should have left. I still feel like God is sitting on the throne and he's like, I never planned for your monkey ass to marry him. I never even planned for you to go out and date with him. That's why I blew your tire. But you hard headed and you went anyway. And then I tried to go ahead and show you signs. You ignored them. Like, I feel like God did everything to help me as his child be like, this is not who I created to be your, your helpmate. And I was like, God, you taking too long. I want to get married. You taking too long. I want to have a family. You taking too long. Him and God. <laughs> God, listen, God, you just took too damn long to bring me a man and give me the life I wanted. So this is your fault that I ignored them. Maybe God was sending you these red flags, Risa, and you were ignoring them. Like maybe God was trying to help you and God was probably sitting there going, every time you saw a red flag and you ignored it, this was God. We probably have the issues around the world we have because God was too busy trying to make sense of this woman's life and her life choices. So he ignored, like, you know, he ignored all the other rest of the world. And that's why we got conflicts everywhere because Risa Tisa couldn't get her shit together. And these are the consequences that I'm paying for basically telling God, you took too long. And um, I feel like God's grace is sufficient. It is. But at the same time, and I'm not perfect. I mean, not perfect at all. None of us are. But... I do feel like when I sit back and I replay the events that happened, I truly cannot believe that was my story. Because all I wanted was to meet a guy, for him to be my best friend, for us to get married. See, and that's why she overlooked it all, because that's all she wants, and that's why I feel bad for her. Married, have a family. I wanted someone I could make fun of his big old forehead, and he make fun of my nappy head and all my wigs, and yet he was my ride or die. That sounds abusive. I don't want anyone to come make fun of me. Last thing I need is having a Yaba Hanja in my house talking about my, uh, you don't look right and thinking that's cute. Be like, ma'am. <laughs> hey, you don't, oh, I wanted someone to come in my house and tell me I don't look right and then I could turn around and threaten his children. Like, oh, sounds so romantic. No, I don't want that kind of relationship and I'm not sure why Risa Tisa wanted it to. Um, I wanted someone that I could be like, man, nope. help me with these kids and he helped mm -hmm. me with the kids. We nope. had a nice home. We were comfortable. Nope. That is what I wanted. And I said this before, and I say it again. I truly thought. It's all she wanted, Lex. I truly all she hoped wanted. It was my turn. See, this, then you, you gotta feel bad for her. You have to feel bad for her. You see the women who are, you know, so happy, and, um, you know, they're in these loving. Lisa TC, she, this, is a, this is the example, prime example of somebody who you need to work on yourself. What does RuPaul say? If you don't love yourself, how the hell can anyone. I, I didn't get it right. What's the exact quote? If you don't love yourself, how the hell do you, can anyone else love you? That's not the right quote. But you know what I'm trying to say, right? There's a quote in there somewhere that RuPaul says. Uh, if you don't love yourself, how the hell is anyone else going to love you? But that's not right. Somebody gave me the right quote. Marriages and life just looks good. I really, really wanted it to be my turn. Oh, God. Fear. And so I excused away a lot of stuff that I hope the next woman. Oh, I love Ace of Base. Does not excuse. Because I don't wish this on anybody. 
I don't wish this on. Risa needs to love herself. And until she finds a way to love herself, she ain't going to find a man. But hopefully she got a man by now. I don't know. It, if you don't love yourself, how the hell can some, how can, how can you love some, how can you love someone when you don't love your, that's not it. No, no, no. Somebody give me the exact quote, please. It's going to drive me nuts. I'll, I'll, I'll Google it. To feel the way I felt the moment I discovered the whole truth. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Risa Tisa, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Um, somebody call RuPaul and get her get her in touch with Risa Tisa. So I just wanted to say that because I think it's important to try to answer the why is she posting this? Honestly, I was tired of holding it in. I was tired of holding it in. Oh, it's like gas. Sometimes you just kind of let it out. Sometimes you just gotta let it out, or you end up with one of them Oswald Cobblepot bodies, right? Where everything's up top because you, you hold the gas in too much, and it goes up, and you have the top of your body expands, and you got these little, little, little legs that end up looking like the penguin from Batman Returns. You gotta let it out, whether it's gas, whether it's trauma, you gotta let it out. Um, and I hope it helps somebody. Okay, let's all take a deep breath. Ooh. Let's all get some sleep. Okay. Um, if you don't have anything to do and you just want to wish me happy birthday, wish me happy birthday tomorrow, February. Happy birthday, Risa. February 15th. Shout out. Happy birthday. A month late. It's a team Aquarius. Good night, y'all. Good night. All right, we're heading into it's the 17. So far, I'm underwhelmed. I feel like this whole, these last couple parts we've watching, she's told us nothing. <laughs> like, I feel like, Risa, this could have been a 10-part series. Like, I feel like I've learned nothing new in parts 12, uh, 13, 14, 15. And 16, but maybe 17 and 18 will have some revelations. <sighs> Part 17. Okay. Who the fuck did I marry? Oh, look at those designs on her ceiling. What is that? That's not popcorn ceiling. Are those shell? It's got to be a design because they're too evenly spaced. So, for context, like and just to clarify some stuff, going forward, I'm going to now call my ex-husband. <laughs> I'm going to use the name that I call him in real life. Um, so that way it clears up the whole uh -huh. fiancé, boyfriend. Asshole. And husband, ex-husband thing. So, his name is Legion. Oh, we finally get to the Legions. Remember someone sent me a super chat about Legion, and I thought like, they were talking about Legionnaire's disease or some shit. I was like, why are we talking about Legions? That's his name, but apparently it's not his real name. Legion is what she calls him in this miniseries. I, guess, I forget what his real name is, but I don't really care. The one that knows me will tell you that is what I call him. So, Legion and I, when I left off at part uh, 16, um, or excuse me, part 15, Legion and I got married January 5th of 2021. Yes. For the first two And by January 31st, she realized you made a mistake. Oh my God, she's so repetitive. Things were fun. Um, we got She's so repetitive. The, the routine, basically. Then you stopped having time. sex. We covered this already. Um, he was still leaving the house at around 6.15 every morning. He was still on the phone with his brother, the one that lived in Philly, um, every morning. He was getting those early morning booty calls with David, allegedly. They would just, that was their time to talk. From what I was told, the brother got off work, I guess, he must have worked the third shift. And so he was getting off work as Legion was getting ready to go to work. So that was the okay. perfect time for them to talk. He would talk to um, his brother in Baltimore and the brother in Augusta. Good morning, Baltimore. Pretty much, you know, just a quick phone call here and there, if not every day, every other day. So everything was pretty much the same. I would talk to my mom almost every day. I would talk to my aunt almost every day. Um, so it was it was nothing to kind of, hmm, that's weird. Um, that's what the morning routine was. He would talk. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and I said this in a previous video, but again, there was, was she a cop or was she like, a, it's still like state police, right? Was she a po police officer? Was she dispatch? Things I said in previous videos that I remember saying, hey, remember that because it's going to come back later. I don't remember that so part, but okay. I worked at Georgia State Patrol. I had been working there for almost eight years, seven or eight years. I guess I missed that part where she says she works for the police. Has she mentioned that before? And I, and I just zoned out. Time Legion got into the picture. He was fine with the fact that I worked. Um, within law enforcement. I'm not a trooper. I'm not a sworn officer. I'm a civilian. However, he, um, again, his dad was a retired police officer. So I missed he that was perfectly part. fine in the beginning with the fact that I worked for Georgia State Patrol. Um, he had been to my office before. He had met some of my um, coworkers. Obviously, even with COVID, because I still had to go into the office two or three days a week, he had been up there. So. It's very long-winded. What she should have done is written out an outline. She just said, you know what? I want to tell TikTok my life story, but she didn't actually, like, she should have written an outline. Like, I'm going to start with this. and this. She just literally fired up TikTok. It just, it was, it's been verbal diarrhea <clears throat> for 16 and a half parts. Oh. The friend who took me to the hospital when I had my miscarriage has met him. He and I have been to her home with her and her significant other before. So, We again, do. Belinda and I talk so much shit about all of you. 
I'll, she'll be like, I'm in the car, bitch, call me. And then we just call her. We just gossip and gossip and gossip and we giggle. We laugh at people. It's such a good time. So romantical. Even in the world of COVID, when there were little times where you could get together with people, he has met people in my life. He has met um, my friend or that particular friend, and he has met some of my coworkers. Yeah. So when we got married, the first two weeks, like I said, was fine. And then it's as if something snapped. Um, something just changed. What was totally... Something has changed within me. Something is not the same. Be acceptable before. I'm through with suddenly little comments were made why are you wearing that to work you get off at 3 30 so you'll be home by five right things that had never happened before he had no not if david not if david can help it never question what time i'm gonna be home um really he didn't need to question it because when i'm off work I, I leave so it was never a situation of oh, i'm just sitting around at work and just run my mouth because i have nothing to do um and then it turned into you know, he would call me every day from work. And I'm going to demonstrate how those phone calls went. But he would call me every day from work. Yeah. And if he even so much as heard a male voice in the background. Oh, no. He would have little comments to me. Who was that? Are they so that wasn't enough for you then? He's also... And we knew he was controlling. The moment this man said... This moment this man went behind her back and texted her mother and her aunt and said, you got to leave her alone for a week. Again, that was controlling red flags. This, this man has said, we could do a whole table of category red flags. And there's so many red flags. Now he's a controlling fucker. He's a liar. He's a scam artist. He's a controlling fucker. But she ignores it all. And, and again, I get it to an extent. But at some point, when do you not, when do you, re like, you have to realize you're better off alone. Like Alice DJ said, do you think you're better off alone? Yes, I do. <laughs> office you know man you know i never know who's who's around you because it seemed like every time i call you i have the hiccups on who's that around you mind your business would be my response it seems like every time i call you um there's some man around and i'm just like you know at first i kind of shrugged it off i laughed it off because it really truly was absurd to me um but then it became a bit more frequent and so I really just didn't feed into it because I'm like, I don't know if this is some insecurity. Wait, someone already made a movie out of a thing that came that's only been out for a month? How the hell did they make it that quick? I'm sure the quality is standard, is, uh, is, uh, is um, excellent. I don't know if this is jealousy because nothing has ever been done to make you feel any sort of insecure type of way. I've never entertained another guy. I've never flirted with another guy. Me neither, Danny. I don't know where this is coming from. Me neither. So it is also important to note. We got married January 5th. Things started changing. We know. January 5th. And by January 31st, you knew you were in danger, girl. Oh, my God. Get to the point, Oda May. Um, around two weeks. You in danger, girl. You guys know what that's from? I'm sure you do. Weeks later. And the reason why I know it's two weeks is because I had recorded an audio. Oh, I guess I'd be the Oda May. She would be the, um, what was, what was, what was, oh, God. Okay, what was Demise Moore's name in that movie? Because she says it to Demi Moore, right? You in danger, girl. What the hell was Debbie Moore's name in that damn movie? I already forgot. I agree. On January 21st. Is I guess I'm the older May. Not Meg. No, I don't think and it was I Meg. And I talk about how maybe I had unreal unrealistic expectations because it seemed as if things were changing with he and I. So, two weeks pass. He starts making little comments. End of January comes. He informs me that he wants to start looking for a house again. Oh. Uh. Oh, this sounds ex I'm exhausted listening to this woman's plight. I had no real desire to go through that process. So what he decides is that he's going to look for a house for us using his friend, the uh, realtor, the one I did. And with. you fell for it a third, was it a fourth time or third time now? I, I've lost track of how many houses this poor woman's tried to buy. So he tells me that. Molly, thank you. Molly, thank you. Yes, Molly. I guess she'd be the Molly on the Oda May. Molly, you in danger, girl. He and his friend have been talking, and he's going to start looking at houses. And what he's going to do is basically, if he feels like it's a house I would like, then he wants to show it to me. Because he feels like, you know, I know that your attitude really isn't, you're in the mood to look for a house, so I'm going to start looking. And then if I think it's a great house, then, you know, you can come see it. Um, and I remember thinking... Uh, did you have deja vu? Because I'm having deja vu. Anyone else? <laughs> that's not, like, that's not going to work. No, Claudia, I think this is a new house. Oh, excuse me. Is this a new house? Or oh, did we go back in time? This is after they got married. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Chantal moment. This is after they got married, right? This is a whole new house. I've lost. This poor woman is literally an HGTV show. You're not going to choose a house without me. And he was like, no, I'm not going to choose a house. But I just think that, you know, me and old boy have been talking. And so he has some houses that he is representing. He wants to show me. So why don't you let me look at it? And if it's worth the time, then I'll bring you to look at it. 
So he already had some sort of plan in place after talking to his friend um, about how he's going to. Oh, I see what you're. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. Start looking at houses. This is Jan- this is the end of January. Oh God! If we took that shot for every house lost, I'd live up to my reputation with the Riri's. 2021. So I kind of threw my hands in the air and was just like, whatever, because I'm not getting emotionally involved in looking at houses and yeah. for me that's kind of what it was i felt like i would see a house i could picture us living there and then it gets snatched away somehow some way i didn't want to go through that so the reaction that he wanted which was for me to throw a fit i did not do i was just like okay all right like i trust you um and remember that i said the reaction he wanted it's almost you know what's funny about this she's the one getting taken for a ride but she's trying to sell it as if she was t oh yeah i didn't give him the reaction he wanted i came out on top no ma'am you did not <laughs> you did not this is not a win for you. This the, the reaction should have been, I'm leaving. Because that's going to come back later. So he started looking uh, at houses. <sighs> Funny enough, the houses that he looked at, none of them I actually saw. But he would call me and say, I'm at this house in Sandy Springs with the uh, realtor friend. He, apparently his realtor, his realtor friend's name was Scott. Not to be confused with the other Scott, the one that was actually helping us that dropped us as clients. I want to make that clear. There were two Scots. One is the realtor who was representing us who said, hey, I need proof of funds. If you don't have those proof of funds. After this story, the only Scott I'll ever trust again is Scott's toilet paper. That's it. I cannot show you any more houses. The other Scott is his friend who he had talked to on the phone at least 50 to 100 times in front of me. And he talked to somebody. That's, that's the Scott that he said is going yeah. to show me this house in Sandy Springs. Yeah. Um, apparently the house was like $800,000. So he was yeah. like, I think that um, if I, you know, if I like the house, then I'm bringing you out here so you can see it. Yeah. All right. Now let's go into part 18. Oh God, it's the final part before we break. Lord Jesus. Okay. Part 18. Who the fuck did I marry? So he starts looking at houses in Sandy Springs, Alpharetta area with his friend Scott. Um, I did not see any of these houses. I did not go. I didn't want to go. Um, so what was starting to change is, remember I said before, he would leave the house every day at around 6.15. Yeah. He would be home every day between 3.30 and 4 o'clock without okay. fail. It was so, I shouldn't say it was annoying, but it, I could set my clock by the fact that I would hear that garage door open between 3.30 and 4 o'clock every day that he went to I mean, isn't that normal? <laughs> like, why, why, why is she stressed out by this? Like, what is it that for those of you who have people coming and going out your house every day and work at nine to five? I feel like there's nothing like out of the own. She's she seems in, like, why are you annoyed by routine? I mean, now we know he probably wasn't going to work, but her being annoyed by the routine of somebody who is going to work is kind of stupid, but okay. Work even during lockdown, he still had to go to work. His job was only locked down for maybe a week. Um, for me, I was allowed to work from home, but unfortunately, I. I did not handle it well. And so I would fall asleep and not check emails. So my boss was like, yeah, you're going to have to come back to the office because you're not trusting me. <laughs> you would just fall asleep? And I wasn't. I mean, I totally, I would watch Netflix and not even be on my computer. So I had to start going back to work every day, five days a week. Um, and I She's was, a lot. Me and another lady were the only two in there because we were Perturbed the only two by comings and goings. It's too much hope. Yeah, Rio, it's very sad. Did not handle work from home properly. Anyway, that's another story. So Legion would, he started to not come home by four o'clock. He started to come home five, five thirty, six, six thirty, sometimes seven o'clock. Oh, he was getting that love, that loving from David. Because he was saying that he was um, wow. looking at houses after work with his friend Scott. Sure. So it definitely was noticed that things are changing. Uh-huh. Um, and I just. Good for you, Amber Chick. At this point kind of emotionally and mentally i was just like i don't know what to do this is the end of january remember i told you in part 15 i got married january 5th by january oh my god if i hear january 5th one more time is that the insurrection date (laughs) did you were you at were you at oh that was january was that the sixth i already lost track i think that was i'm thinking of january 6th never mind 31st i kind of knew i was in trouble disregard and by the end of january sure enough i knew things were changing in a way that i was like i hate to sound redundant well, what the fuck is going on? So the he's still maintaining the story of looking for a house, looking for a house. I got there sooner or later. Six. I had already let him know my lease is up in August. When my lease is up in August, I am moving to Cobb County. Um, she loves a county. <laughs> and my attitude was kind of like, you can go with me or you can stay here. I don't care, but I'm moving. I'm leaving Clayton County. The reason why I, want, I was so adamant to move was not because of Clayton County. It was not because of the house that I was in. It was because Legion had started to create this narrative that he was beefing with my female neighbor. He was trying to get me to believe that my female neighbor to the left of me. Um, 
She's so fucking detailed. It has to be not the one to the right of her. <laughs> the female neighbor to the left of me. Oh my God, who cares? Somehow was interested in him. And so she would make these little comments. And he would come in the house complaining about her and her music and the fact that she had, you know, different men over to the house. It was driving me crazy. And all of this was kind of starting in January. So when I say that, it really seems like we got married January 5th. And then we had two weeks of peace. And then something just snapped. I literally mean something just snapped. So he's looking at houses. Now we're moving into February. February obviously is my birthday month. Um, he did good. He did good to make Valentine. He went all out for Valentine's Day. He went all out for my birthday. My birthday and Valentine's Day are February 14th and February 15th. So um, he went all out on both days. <sighs> Y'all ain't even gonna believe this story. I need, someone needs to take all this and condense it into like a version that's like 20 minutes or less. But I said I would share even when it makes me look bad. So, oh, the weekend God. after my birthday, and what I mean by that is, if my birthday was on a Tuesday, we're talking about Saturday. Um, the weekend after my birthday, he gave me money to go to the nail salon, go okay. get a manicure and pedicure. Okay. So, I leave the house. I take his car. His car was in the driveway. We had a key to each other's car, because again, Thanks, we're married Rampage. at this point. We're talking February 2021. So, I take his car, and I drive to the nail salon over in Morrow. I'm in the chair, getting a pedicure, and I get a text message from my husband saying, someone was just at the house looking for you. And I'm like, who was looking for me? What do you, well, who was it? And he said, I don't know. The common sense police. I think it was some, this is their text. I don't know. I think it was some dude. It was the, 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 the brains department. You forgot to pick yours up. You used to mess with. Okay. Um, I was like, what are you talking about? He's, and he was like, I'm talking. And does that annoy you, Nikki, that he's home every day at 340? Because I don't know why it annoyed her. You, some guy just came to the house looking for you. I told him you were not here. So at this point, y'all, I'm in the chair at the salon. I'm freaking out because I'm like, who the fuck has the audacity to come to my home unannounced, uninvited, talking about they're looking for me? Especially because before I met my husband, I was working I was working the last shift at Amazon as a part-time job. So I See, this is how the conversation would have went with Gigi, right? I'm over there, I'm at the nail salon, I'm getting my nails did. Bing, ring, ring, a bit like, hello, I'm getting my nails did. Gigi, it's me, Zach. Hey, Zach, what's up? Somebody was at the house looking for you. Like, could you give me a little, a little more details? Oh, I don't know. Some guy rang the doorbell and was looking for you. Did you ask for a name? No. Did you ask them what they wanted? No. Oh, okay. Well, you're lucky you're pretty. And when I get home, I'm probably going to yell at you goodbye. Why wouldn't you ask, like, who are you? What do you need from her? Can I get a name? Can I get a picture? Yeah. I had not dealt with, dated anything with anyone for about a year before I met him in March of 2020. It's too so much. I really was like, who the hell is this coming to my house? So I finished the pedicure, I head home. Once I get home, I'm Zach like, would what? never, Zach would have asked all the appropriate questions. I agree with you 100%, not Claudia. What are you talking about, what happened? Exactly, Lex. And, and so I'm frazzled. Zach would have had a video clip, a photo, a name, address, probably a social security number, because he loves me, unlike this poor woman's husband. No way. And he's calm, he was like, yeah, it was a black Dodge Charger. They Shut pulled up, into Dad. the driveway. They backed in. They backed in as if they had been here before. So clearly this was someone who, who, who's been to your house. He got out the car. He said, I opened the door and I went out there and I said, you know, is there something I can help you with? And he said, the guy said, I'm looking for and gave him my name. And he said, I'm sorry, she's not here. And he said, he was like, oh, okay. Um, all right then. And just got in the car and drove off. And I was like, my brain stopped working because I'm thinking, who the heck could this be? A Poor woman couldn't even enjoy her damn manicure. Dodge Charger? I was like, are you sure that it wasn't law enforcement? Like, was it the sheriff's office trying to serve me with a lawsuit for a credit exactly, card? Exactly, Belk. That bitch. I didn't pay. He was like, no, he was in regular clothes. He was like, and it was not a, um, a, a police car. It was on a marked unit, basically. And so I'm just like, who the heck could this be? And he was like, I know who it was. And I said, who? Who? He was like, I think it was your ex. I said, what ex? He was like the one that you had dated for two years. Remember back in like part three, part four, I told y'all, he told me about his ex. I told him about mine. Oh, I forgot about that. I thought we were being honest with each other. So now fast forward to February, 2021. And he's telling me, yeah, I think it was the ex that you had been dealing with for those two years before you met me. I said, so you think that he showed up to the house uninvited after two years? And he was like, well, whoever it was, sense. clearly was comfortable pull, backing into our driveway, getting out the car, and was like, I'm here to see. And He's just making up stories now. Gave, me, gave him my name. Um, and so he was like, she's not here. Is there something I can help you with? And the guy was like, nah, nah, it's cool. Um, and then just got in the car and drove off. So, uh, again, brain is like, who, who could this be? So then Legion says to me, you know what? The way that you reacting to this, 
is real suspect. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, you over here freaking out. I told you I took care of it. I told you it was fine. And you over here freaking out, which makes me wonder, what, are you, what have you been up to? Now, let's go to part 19. Well, I'm kind of glad we left it there because I feel like that's a little bit of a, of a um, cliffhanger, but I'd keep going. But honestly, I don't feel like getting tired. I want to do 90 minutes or less, and this is perfect. And I want to go lay on the couch and watch TV, but I figured let's get this stream in. So I'll be back Thursday night either with parts 19, 19 through 24 or I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check on um, check it on, on Amberlynn and Chantal I'm not sure yet, we'll see thanks Vitamin K, I'm at the beach, the waves don't move mind your business, so anyways Vitamin Water, thanks for being a member for 5 months I think that covers everything um, so I'll be back Thursday I just don't know what I want to do yet it's either going to be this or it's going to be some Girl World shit I'm not sure what I want to do yet, we'll see but uh, Thursday, not till Thursday because I got the bowlings tomorrow. Maybe even Friday. It might be Thursday or Friday. We'll see how I feel. But anyways, yeah, this she's getting boring. Like the first six parts were super exciting, and now I feel like the second two are just like boring. Like when does she get to the good shit? Hopefully, starting with part nineteen. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, mods, thanks for modding. Everyone, thanks for supporting and being here. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll pop in here and there on the twatter, and uh, you guys can uh, check me out on there. Oh, I'm so jealous for you, Lex. I'm so jealous of you, Lex. I want to go on a fucking cruise so bad. Hope you have fun. All right, guys. I'm going to go. I'm a little tired, and these allergies are kicking my butt. So I'm going to go back on the couch, watch a little more TV. Is anyone going live tonight? Is there a Belinda? No, Belinda's not going to go live. I wonder if anyone else is going to go live. Anybody worth watching anyways? Let me do a quick scan of Twitter. Uh, I know Owl was live earlier. I don't know if Pistachio's going to do anything. But Linda definitely can't because she's busy selling trailers and cell phones and electronics and shit. So, I don't know. Keep an eye out. to see. Oh, Hikati's daughter, I think, is going to be live. Oh, is she live right now? Hold on. Foodie Beauty, the How Did We Get Here series. Is she live? Oh, she's live right now. Oops. So, Hikati's daughter's live right now. Um... Let me put her link. I'm going to put a link to Twitter in chat. Yeah, I figured you were working, selling those uh, things. So this is Hikati's tweet. If you click on that, uh, you can get to her live stream. Or if you type in Hikati's daughter, it, yeah, she's live right now. So if you want to go ch watch her, I'll listen to her for a little bit. She's live at the moment. You can use the tweet Twitter link I put in chat or just type in H-E-K-A-T-E apostrophe S daughter and check out what she's talking about. I don't have an outro, so I'm going to end it here. I love you guys. I'll see you Thursday or Friday. Have a good week or a good couple days, and I'll see you soon. Bye.